Okay, moving on. We're going to take off the next piece here. This, I will usually take this, this section here where the ribs were in two pieces. Oh, and one piece if it's a smaller pig. It's pretty darn simple. Just go right up to where the that last rib is here, and I'm just going to cut all the way through like this. I'm going to flip it right over. And let's see here. There. Okay. This is right kind of the edge or the middle of the the neck hump here. I think I got all that cut through. I'm just going to cut through it and bend it over. Okay, got it dislocated. Almost dislocated. There we go. A lot of little bones in that section. Okay, so I've got this. This will be two separate pieces. Now again, this the way I cut this up, you can you can do it a little bit different. Um, I mean, it depends. I can instead of starting this this back section, top of the back, instead of just cutting it off there, I can start by carving it right from the head. And if I do that, I can actually make this whole this this lump here, the neck portion up here, which is usually the most heavily marbled tender most meat. I could have made this whole piece here its own cut and then this section here would be a less marbled cut. I didn't do that. No real reason why. It's just another option. But either way here I'm going to go ahead and cut that skull right off and I'm going to try and keep all this jowl. That's this part down here, the floppy part under the neck. I'm going to try and keep that all intact too. So I'm going to basically carve the skull off of all of this. Look at all that flop. This, this jowl cut here is usually the sloppiest, messiest looking cut, especially if you're doing these fresh with, without having the carcass chilled first. Just because there is, it's all floppy. There's nothing holding it together. Cut around that bone. Or windpiper, yeah, part of the bone around the windpipe area. I'm just going to continue cutting right up and through, right against the back of that head. Feeling around for where the bones are. Okay, right through the neck bone. There. This, I'm going to, i got to pull a part of the esophagus windpipe here out yet. And I'm going to cut the jowls, the floppy lower portion, separate from the firmer upper portion here and I'm going to do that pretty simply just kind of feel for where this this kind of atlas bone region is here I'm going to cut on the bottom of it so the floppy side is all down here without bone and from this bone up is the top up towards the head well this is its own piece of muscle up here versus the floppy down all right, cutting through some of that fat to find where that muscle is. There we go. Now I can pretty much see where that muscle is here. I've got all this sloppy jowl here, which is the prize of the pot bellies and other live breeds. And a little bit of bruise to cut out from where the bullet went down. Probably a little piece of bone in there too I'll have to get. And this... Um, I like to just cut it up small and fry it or cure it like a bacon and then go ahead and fry it from there. It's super, super, super fatty. So I wouldn't really recommend doing a, a roast or something like that with it. But the top half is definitely a nice roast. It's a smaller roast the way I cut it up because I left a large portion of that hump back onto this piece. Why I did that, yeah, I felt like it. But if I wanted to leave this whole hump together, the back hump here, it would have probably been a little more evenly portioned. So 
So maybe I'll do that on the next one if I remember. That is cutting up the entire pot belly pig.